Hello everybody, so today I want to talk to you about the work I've been doing around autumn woodland as a theme in my paintings. Um, most of you might be aware that I am developing a whole body of work uh, about the landscapes that surround me and that includes woodland. Um, and autumn is one of my favourite seasons, so autumn woodland is a real, has a real resonance with me. Um, and in addition to that, um, very, very fortuitously actually, Emily Ball and Katie Solihub uh, ran an online uh, workshop uh, in early November about autumn trees. Um, and I wanted to share with you really um, the work that I did as part of that um, and why that has such resonance for me and why um, the approaches that were taken were so useful. Um, you're probably aware that I do, I like to do a lot of um, studies and to really um, get to grips with my subject matter out on the landscape itself. Um, doing mark making, colour work, black and white work, um, everything out in the landscape. And then I bring that work back into the studio um, and try and un unravel it, if you will, um, and develop my paintings. And that is exactly really um, the approach that was taken for the workshop. And so we went out into the landscape and did a lot of, of studies in different ways, uh, very exciting um, approaches that were taken. Uh, and then we brought that back and over the days of the, the subsequent three days of the workshop online, we then started to unpick that and started the development of some paintings. And I say start because the whole point is that this will now, this process will now continue for me, very much so. But I, what, what I want to do now is to turn the camera around and share with you um, the work that I, pr I produced, both out in the landscape uh, and then subsequently how we started to unpick that and, and grapple with it really. And what's really exciting is that it gives me um, even more sort of approaches and uh, ways of thinking about the subject matter. Uh, because let's face it that these subjects that we were we are fascinated by as artists they you know they're huge they're enormous subjects so how do we kind of get to grips with them really and and understand what it is that we particularly uh, love and are inspired by and want to portray in our paintings um, and the approaches that were taken really um, I think will really help me to do that and hopefully they'll be of use to you too if you're an artist so I'm going to turn the camera around now and share with you what I've done so far. It's not finished work particularly, in fact it's not finished work at all, mostly it's studies and there are some start points for some paintings uh, but the point is that it gives you that kind of almost translator if you like of what's going on out in the landscape and how you bring that back and unpick it and of course you need to keep revisiting and going outside again and exploring and understanding but it just gives you those sorts of roots in really to develop meaningful paintings. So I'm going to start by showing you two walls, one which has got black and white work on it and one which has got colour work on it. And this was all done out on location uh, in the woodland landscape. Um, and I'm showing you it all together and then I'm going to move in closer so that you can see it in more detail. So one of the great studies uh, that we did was this, um, and I'll just, just focus on one sheet because they were just, they're just repeats. So we literally divided the paper up and this was done kneeling out in the woodland and mark making using uh, biro and charcoal and graphite but kneeling down over the paper with our eyes closed um, and this is really interesting because you, uh, you can only just sort of feel the surface of the paper and where the tapes are but you don't really know where you're putting the marks and the marks aren't um, obviously you can't see so it, they're not about what's in the landscape they're actually the sounds so you're mark making as you hear sounds so out in my woodland I could hear geese and other birds I could hear the shuffle of leaves I could hear cars I could hear horns I could hear cows I could hear all sorts of um, you know sort of different sounds out in the landscapes dog barking etc and these, this creates quite an interesting um, piece of work, which is quite fascinating because, as you can see, the, the marks are all over the place. Some, are, some areas have a density of marks, some areas have marks hanging off the side, some, er some little squares or oblongs have virtually no marks. Um, and this is quite interesting because you can actually, we then did a little exercise where you take that approach back into the studio. That's just another example of it. 
and on the bottom here, take that approach back into the, into the studio um, and actually do some mark making based on some marks that are in some of your works. And what you're trying to do is to mimic that kind of randomness really, because we do kind of create quite neat compositions oftentimes with everything very organized. And this is just uh, using what we found with the sound uh, exercise to challenge us to do things that are a little bit, some marks hanging off the edge, some, you know, just kind of coming into the paper from outside of the paper, some sort of in the center, some going across, some right on an edge rather than being evenly distributed. And it's just a chat, it's just a great warming up exercise, really. So that was that. And then this um, group here, and I'll show you them one by one. There's one there, one there, one up here, and then two uh, down here. Uh, they weren't all done in the same location. Uh, most of them were done in the woodland. This one in particular is a, a group of cherry trees out in the landscape. And these, um, two were done or three i should say the, t the two oblong ones on the left and the top one on the right uh, were done in the same location and interestingly what we did was to use charcoal and what we were doing was to actually uh s sort of trying to really get to grips with the three-dimensionality of the uh, landscape and so what we did was we started with pushing charcoal into the paper to reflect uh, the, the, the shapes of the trees and the canopies, uh, maybe overlapping and just smudging it in. And then we carved into it to get this idea of moving through the landscape, around the tree, the backs of the trees, up the trees, um, around and about and up and down and across, so that you're kind of almost moving through the landscape in the way that you're making the marks. And most of that was done rubbing out because you'd already created quite a black, uh, dense surface, rubbing out and actually sort of really um, quite energetic marks. And then overscoring with marks and lines um, and almost follow, taking the line for a walk with some of these uh, more sort of straggly lines to try and get a real sense um, of that treescape and of the depth and of the overlapping. Uh, there's not a flat landscape, is it? Okay, so this work in colour in front of uh, me here uh, was all also done in the landscape. And the top, I don't know if you can see, but that's three A2 pieces was divided, each, each piece was divided into four. And I didn't do them all at once. I did them on several different occasions when I went out there. And then the bottom A4 pieces, of which there are six, uh, are um, collage, mixed media collage pieces. And so let me just talk you through how these were created. So the top ones were done with a mix of different uh, colour color, um, mark making. So I used um, pastel, coloured pastels, cheap coloured pastels. Um, oil pastels, gouache, um, and some of my favoured uh, woody, Stabilo woody uh, pencils. And what this was, was almost a scribbling exercise, if you like. So you would look in different directions, not just in one direction, and you would make the marks as you were looking and rubbing into the paper and over layering to change and reflect colours and to create a depth in them. And it was just an energetic way of really kind of trying to get into the um, the, the ways of the uh, colour in there, you know, whether they were great big chunks or whether they were wiry lines or whether they were kind of coming through and under and over, a little bit like I was describing the um, charcoal drawings, but this time using colour. And then the bottom ones are interesting because they were done so you, I had another sheet of the same sort of um, oblongs I created that you've, I've just talked you through. I had another sheet, so instead of making three sheets, I made four sheets. And so one of them I used to create the collages below. And the background colours are P2 
pieces of paper that I painted with colours that reminded me of the landscape. And then subsequently, instead of taking with the, with the coloured uh, patterns and areas, what you do is you take one of your uh, multicoloured pieces and you take your scissors for a walk. And so you're looking, you're doing this outside in the landscape and you're cutting and your eye is following up and down and around and through and maybe round some of the leaves and behind a tree and maybe up a branch. And then by doing that, you create these very interesting shapes and then you superimpose them together and you literally just combine um, pieces of plain coloured paper and the cut uh, patterns or some of them I did the other way around so I actually cut some of the coloured papers some of the plain coloured paper as well and then you create these interesting collages um, but it creates as you can see quite an interesting set of work as start points um, for back in the studio. So these works were all studies done in the studio um, after having the experiences outside and if I can start by focusing on the top uh, right, um, we did quite a bit of meditation with Katie talking us through um, you know, the, the memory of being out in the landscape in the woodland and what it felt like and what things we were noticing. And we were encouraged to write things down. So in the top right, what we were encouraged to do was to we had a, a sort of a five minutes to write down anything that came into our heads about the experience really. But then we were encouraged to make pairs of just things that we described that were could be a shape and then things uh, that could be the marks and the lines. So if I move up to it now to show you and I can read some of them out to you. So the first one I wrote in the fresh smell of felty moss with the jaggedy edges and wavy margins of leaves running through. Um, and so that's uh, it on the uh, left hand side, those one, two, three. Um, and we were encouraged to uh, just do two minute paintings that reflected uh, those descriptions. And then the next one is rich orange marmalade colours like that favourite cat in our street, all strung together with twigs like string meandering and slinking like the cat. Um, so I think you get the impression. So these are really helpful actually because they start focusing your attention on what you're interested in. And there's a freshness to these studies because they are so simple and just a couple of minutes. So some of that can very readily be taken into paintings. Uh, and you can do as many, you know, obviously as you like and, and that's just some examples that I did. And then I wanted to focus on, let me just step back so I can show you the two um, on that left hand side. So on the bottom left, those four A4 pieces, I did actually as part of the workshop. And they were done in re response to having a statement, which is again, like I was just describing, um, that could be you know, a, a, a shape, and then a statement that could be about the lines and the edges. Um, what I was uncomfortable with was that mine, to me, didn't have that earthiness and rawness and immediacy of the ones done out on location. So I kind of came back to them last week on my own. So this time back in the studio, I was not only uh, using the words and using that idea of the carpets and the line stitching, but also referencing my studies, arguably a little bit better, and looking at the earthiness of them and the immediacy of them, and some of the specific um, elements of them that I was interested in incorporating. And so in this way, they, this, these become a little bit more holistic and a little bit more uh, in line with my experiences and the landscape. So this final piece is actually started its life as a piece of mark making about the woodland. So it was a whole sheet and that was then torn up. And then a piece of that, um, those, one of those torn pieces was selected, pasted onto the paper. And then you make a composition using that as your start point, connecting lines to it, shapes to it, patterns to it, whatever, um, and creating a composition. That piece I'm pointing to is actually, was actually the start point. Uh, and, and that's how you create that, that piece.
So I just wanted to finish by showing you some of the zoomed in areas of the three paintings that I've started. They have a long way to go, but using the studies and the approach of creating studies from my paintings and studies from the studies, I'm really looking forward to de delving in further and developing these uh, so that they reflect uh, the interests I have in the uh, woodland landscape. Thanks very much for watching and please do like and subscribe if you can. Thank you. Bye bye.